me to a fencing, a fencing class uh, that was very close by to where we live. And it was actually in a Polish cultural foundation. So he said, okay, she'll continue practicing the language and <laughs> stay, stay busy. Yeah. And then, you know, I walked into a fencing class and I was like, okay, I'm hooked. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> and what age? When you start? Um, I started around nine, nine, ten years old. Yeah, it was perfect, no? Yeah. Perfect. And you stay in the same club today we start? Uh, no, I so I, I started um, with a club called Polish American Fencing School and that coach I was with him Janusz Monek he actually just retired this year. Um, I was with him for about six, seven years and then when I was like 14, 15, I thought, okay, I kind of maximize everything I could out of this club. And I really want to leave, you know, with a good relationship with this coach, but I just think I need to take it to the next step. And that's when I went to New York City and I had a conversation with Yuri Gelman and I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, what, what age you start to realize, oh, maybe I can be good in this? Um, You know, it took a while. Um, even when I was graduating in high school in 2006, there was a lot of um, teachers that, you know, knew that I was traveling a lot. Um, you know, I was, <laughs> I managed to keep up my grades, but, you know, traveling a lot. And, you know, they said, what's the next step? Like, it's, is it Olympics now? I said, Olympics, you're crazy. Like, we're not even, no, we're no close. And then I think literally a month later, Yuri was like, okay, we need to start talking about the Olympics. And I was like, what is wrong with everybody? I'm not that good. Um, and, and then I started thinking, okay, like I, I, I think I want this, you know, Olympics and, and even junior teams and stuff, it was never on my radar. I have to say, I really fell in love with the sport and uh -huh. being able to hit other kids and not get in trouble <laughs> and, and just, you know, I, I loved the whole sport. And then, you know, the, the, that everyone else, my mom, my dad, they were like, hey, you need to go to some competition. So you need to do this. And I was like, okay, I guess. <laughs> the thing was happening naturally, you know, you don't push too much yeah, for this yeah for sure that's good that's good so okay uh let's start with some questions uh i can't see everybody and eh? so mike is uh, open to the questions ari do we have some questions to dagmara um yeah maybe one of my questions would be um i guess what do you love most about saber what do i love most about saber yeah um, well, you know, I, everyone talks about how fencing is like a physical chess game and I, you know, as cliche as that is, I do really love that analogy and, you know, it's, it's fun to be in a high pressure situation. If it's like world championships, you're like fencing against the best, or even if it's like a practice competition, but you're like taking it seriously. Um, you know, I'm very competitive in the club. So I love that challenge of, okay, like, how am I going to outsmart this person? Okay. Like, how am I going to, you know, make them fall into my trap and then, you know, slamming someone with a pair of pose is just like an awesome feeling. So everything all together about fencing is just, um, I love it. <laughs> yeah. So do you, you, of course, it's not natural in the first moment to go to overseas and go to the World Cups and World Championships. We know is a. Uh... Oops, what's happened? Lost Hello. You. Yeah, you're still there. Oh, there yeah, you are. Yeah, see that? Okay. <laughs> okay. So we know it's not. Uh, it's not easy. You know, it's a different approach, a different countries, different peoples, different ways to fence. So, you, even the beginner, as you told, you fence. You never was in your radar to be Olympics and things like that. When we start to go to the World Cups and competitions overseas, it's natural you feel this some pressure or some, uh, okay, this is not my, it's not my habit, I know. Right. But uh, do you think you feel, you felt that too much or was a little natural uh, this change for the international competitions? Well, when I went to my first Cadet World Cup, it was actually in Konin in Poland. So that was a little bit of like an easier transition for me because I yeah. was helping everyone translate and it was, you know, my home yeah. country and, and it wasn't as shocking to go to an inter international competition. But I went, when I went to my first Cadet World um, in uh, Austria, um, I almost passed out because I was so nervous. 
you know i saw how many competitors <laughs> there were i saw all the flags like it's a big deal and i'm like oh no i i have to do well and literally i remember standing on guard and i was just like this like falling <laughs> over, passing out so i think you know for me it didn't it didn't come naturally i'm definitely a type of athlete that um, has to experience things. Uh, and then I kind of learned from experience and I've had this conversation with Mario Zagunis and she's the, quite the opposite. So for her, the first time is the best time. Um, even though she's proven to be an amazing athlete time and time again. Um, yeah. So I, the, the one thing that I, I can tell if anyone is ever going to a competition, um, or an international, whatever new situation you kind of, um, come across, I can tell you that it's no different. So it's no different when you're fencing at practice than when you're fencing at a World Cup or if you're fencing at World Championship. The only thing that changes is the environment, right? So there's people, there's more referees, there's more coaches, there's more, you know, there's, it's environmentally, it's a lot different. But if you look at what you're actually doing, it's exactly the same. Yeah, if you put focus in yourself, it's just fancy. I need fancy, but I need to do my best. No? Exactly. It's this way. So, another question? You guys have any questions? Do you have a question? Everybody's a little shy here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ask away. Okay, Rebecca? Yeah. How did you learn to move so fast in the Olympics? What, what was the question? It kind of goes in and out for me. Go, go close. If you Sorry. Think <laughs> um, how did you learn to move so fast? How did I learn to move so fast? Well, thank you. I actually think I'm one of the slowest. On screen, but, um, you know, I, I, it's, it's a lot of practice, a lot of, uh, a lot of practice and the best place to practice is going to be at practice. Um, I, I kind of told myself, um, when I was thinking about, okay, what can I do to improve? What can I do to kind of put a good, put up a good fight against, um, all these other, you know, amazing athletes from the world. And I kept telling myself, you know how sometimes you go to practice and you're just like, oh, I'm tired after school and I'm just going to fence. And then you go home and you, you kind of don't remember the day. So you're just going through the motions. And I think that that's an opportunity lost. Um, so it's, it's not practice makes perfect. It's, perfect practice makes perfect. So making sure that when you're at, at practice, when you're working out or whatever you're doing, you're, you're cognitively aware of what you're working on. There's always a small goal. Okay, today I'm gonna fence with no pair pose. Okay, today I'm gonna make it more physical. Okay, today I'm not gonna lose a single match. So having something that you're always working at, um, eventually things just start to build up. And, and I guess people think you're fast. So yay, I did something right. <laughs> Yeah, she, she made your day. <laughs> so, what I mean, so we need to take attention every single day with the footwork. You know, I always pass for the kids here, uh, the Russian expression, no legs, no fence, you know, because if you have a mind, you know, use your arm, but if you don't have legs, no fencing, nothing yeah. to do. So you need to work, work hard on the footwork. Okay, you have a question for Coach David. Yeah. He's a great fencer. What, what do you think is the most important part of daily training? Like, is it the mindset? Is it just the physical exercise? Is it just getting out of the house? What is the most important part? Uh, are you talking about right now? Yeah, just in general. What's the most important In general. Part? Okay. Well, you know, the, there's like a two part to this answer, I guess, because like right now, this is a really difficult time that everybody's going through. Um, you know, we can't, some people are, don't feel comfortable to come to practice. Some people don't feel comfortable leaving their house. So I think mindset is going to be, even before all of this pandemic, I think it's such an important thing. And, you know, even, even in my history of, or my career, when I look back on situations, I'm like, wow, like, why did I think I was not good enough in this situation? Or why did I think I couldn't beat this person? Um, it's, it's mindset is such a huge game changer. And I think if you ever doubt yourself and you think like, oh, like my footwork's not good enough or I'll never be an Olympian or I'll never make a, you know, whatever, whatever goal it is that you wanna say, the, the truth that you can bring yourself back to is always say, why not me? You know, every greatest athlete at one point asked themselves, why can't I be the one that everybody says is the best or that is the fastest or is the most skilled or whatever? Just ask yourself, like, why can't that be me? 
um, and know that it is possible. It's, it's possible. It's just a matter of working at it. So mindset is, is a huge, huge, huge chunk into, um, you know, getting further in and getting better in fencing in school. You don't just go and open the books. Like you have a plan. You, you kind of, you know, break it down. Okay. Like I didn't do well on the test. Okay. So I need to study more. I need to get another book. I need to get a tutor. It's so easy for us to kind of um, think about how to get better at different situations like that, especially school. And all of a sudden it's like fencing. It's like, I don't know how to get better or I lose a competition and I just, I can't think about it anymore. No, break it down, you know, see what you did right, see what you did wrong and treat it like a math problem and, and analyze what you can improve on and then just go to practice and, and do it again. Yeah, this way. Yeah, and be a, be a high level athlete sometimes is a, we can put this way is a, just a little boring routine. You, know? you need to do every single day almost the same and be perfect and be perfect and be perfect and correct and correct and correction, correction. It's tough, you know? And you need to put our goals and say, okay, this is my goal. This is my target. I need to keep going. You know? I can't stop and think. I have a friend say, I can't stop to think because if I think I cry, if I cry, I stop. <laughs> I leave. That's <laughs> true. It's true. I, I, just, I just keep going. Keep going. Okay, Isaiah, do you have some question for Dagmara? Oh, uh, yeah, I do. Um, my question is, uh, how do you prepare mentally and physically like uh, before a tournament? So one thing that I did um, this past, uh, well, I mean, it's been a year now since we competed last, but um, right before I went to the last World Cup before the pandemic exploded, um, you know, I, I was ranked like eighth or ninth um, going into, you know, the qualification process. And I'm thinking like, okay, I'm coming back from a surgery. I'm not hundred percent healed, but I need to go to this competition or else I'm completely out of, you know, the running for the team. And I had two months to prepare from Montreal, which I went and I didn't make it out of pools and not to toot my own horn, but I had just the first competition I've ever been to a senior world cup in New York. I didn't make it out of pools. And then I said, that was a horrible feeling. That's never happening again. And throughout my whole career, I've always made it out of pools. Um, and all of a sudden now I'm back to square one and I'm thinking, wow, is this, is this how it's going to end for me? So I had two months to prepare for um, a world cup in, in uh, Athens, Greece. And I started working with a confidence coach. This is where it's tying back to a lot about mindset, um, making sure that every day counted. And in order to physically see that every day counted, every time after practice, I have to compliment myself. So, okay, I didn't want to be here today because I'm in a lot of pain, but I came anyway. I took a really good lesson and I would take these little jewels and I put them in this little basket thing that I had in my locker. So right as I'm leaving to the competition, I had this thing that's filled with all these jewels and I'm like, dang, like I did this work. I'm proud of this and I'm going prepared. Um, a lot of the times when we're going into a competition, we think I didn't practice enough or um, I didn't take enough lessons or I, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. You know, so there's the, all that fear is starting. The, the number one thing that fear does is it makes you doubt yourself. Um, and so going into a competition with that kind of mindset, I mean, what do you expect? You know, how can you kind of go in there with this kill mentality of like, I'm going to defeat everyone when you're going in doubting yourself so much. So what I do before competitions, um, you know, I mean, like I said, it's been a while since we've competed right now, but, you know, going in, making sure that every practice counts. So you go in there being like, listen, however the cards fall, that's how they fall. But I know that I came here prepared I did everything I could do, and now it's it's not really up to me what happens. I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to give it my best, and, and it, you can feel good with that. Yeah, this way. I always pass for the kids the idea. So when you go to the competition, for sure, you need to respect the adversary, blah, 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 respect everybody, but you need to respect yourself, respect your sacrifice, respect the times you pass in the fencing room, the times you spend and do your best every single evening in the fencing room your personal sacrifice and enjoy and have yeah. fun. No, don't think in too much or yeah. it'd be crazy. No? <laughs> so uh, one other, another um, idea when I bring you to talk with us uh, is because the, of course, uh, 
I'm a I'm born in Brazil, but I'm a French master, you know, the Academy from French Masters. And the most part of our guests we bring here come from Europe and uh, the French the French fencers, you no? Know? And uh, you know, it's a totally different reality from us here in the United States. You no, know? the guys have a support for everything, money for everything, right. uh, doctors, uh, physios, everything's free. Five lessons a week, you no, know, don't pay for nothing. And uh, I think with you, you can pass to our fencers. And uh, for my luck, I have a good fencer here too, and think and go going far in the American team in the future, maybe. No, let's work for that. So, how you did this, uh, or your parents or your family, you know, the yeah. sacrifice, uh, how you drive the sacrifice to uh, here's comp- even you, like an Olympic champion, uh, Olympic medalist, and a world champion is not easy to bring some sponsor to yourself. Uh, it's complicated to me, and uh, believe this in the United States, but this is reality, you know, it's complicated right. for the fencers. How you pass or how you jump or how you drive these hard situations in your career? Um, great question. Um, so, you know, obviously we know that this is not um, sponsorships like basketball or, again, like you said, it's not a European system where we live in a national training center and everything's kind of taken care of. Um it was definitely um, a struggle, you know, like there were times where, you know, I, I don't know, I didn't do well. And, and granted, my parents are amazing, but, you know, they were like, we could have, you know, used this money to, I don't know, buy a new car or something like that. So uh, they had a lot of pressure situation because it's not, it's not just like, okay, like, hey, let's just have some fun. I really wanted to be um, the best and go into World Cups. It was it was definitely difficult. And they were sending me alone and um, trying to figure all of that out. So I think when I made my first um, senior team in 2007, I had about $25,000 of debt on a credit card. And I was just like, it was all fencing expenses. And I, you know, didn't necessarily know how I was going to take care of that. But then making the senior team, we started getting a stipend about like, I don't know, 1500 a month. Um, it was a little bit different back then. Um, and I just literally took that whole thing and I just kept paying off the credit card. But for me, you know, like, despite not having sponsors, like, I love this sport. And I've been in it for so long. I've always told myself, like, no matter how difficult things can get, like, I'll find a way, I'll figure it out. Um, Because it means that much to me. And, you know, if there were situations like, you know, hanging out and going to the mall and, and like having an allowance or something like that. Like I, I didn't do that. You know, I, I, the second school ended at like two 30, I was on a train at like three twenty-five to the city to make sure that I got my training in. Um, that was something that was really important for me. And I was going to do everything I could to, to get there. Um, so I guess there was like sacrifices in terms of like not going to parties or, um, family vacation like I told my parents like I'm not going anywhere um I have a camp the day after Christmas like I have to get to work you know so um I knew that I was going to look back on that situation and have regret if I didn't you know take full advantage of it so I think like whatever could get me one step closer to um to improving myself as an athlete or making sure that it's something that is again going to help me and what my goals are um i did everything i could to to get that and you know the the sponsorships started to slowly roll in you know like i know it's really crazy right now with with instagram and and just trying to be like really popular but that's not what's most important to me it's like (laughs) yeah what is going to be your legacy as an athlete and as a person and if you're as true as you can be to that um then i'm telling you sponsorships will come um but yeah (laughs) yeah this way i i pass for the kids uh so i don't know what will will finish but in the end of the history it doesn't matter what's happened you will get some histories to tell for your grandson so because you was great no you you did something in your life that was a, a clone life. No, it's a boring life. It's different. But I believe, and I'm sure everything passed and everything, uh, you really realize, okay, the sacrifice was amazing. And uh, I, I do everything again when you got your Olympic medal in Rio de Janeiro, no? 
Oh yeah. And I can tell you when that thing went around my neck, I was just like, uh, is this real? Like, is this really happening? Like, and, and I thought about it, like the last time that I made a commitment to bring home a medal, even when everyone was telling me like, you'll never make an Olo another Olympic team. Um, you know, I, I, I thought about it and I was like, wow, eight years, eight years passed since when I decided to become an Olympian. And like, I had an opportunity to like have a medal with the team, but it didn't work out for me. You know, I told myself like, I'm going to make it. And I made London and went home with no medal. We didn't have team events. So I said, no, like this is okay. The plan is for another four years. And then looking back on how long it took me it just made everything worth it. Um, you know, there was always an obstacle, there was always something new to deal with, but as, as like down on yourself, you might feel at the end of the day, like just make a plan, like, okay, this sucks, I lost, like it just doesn't feel good, but what can I do to change it? You know, I see even athletes at my club, like they don't do well at a competition and they just kind of cry, I still cry, but I sit there and I'm like, okay, what can I do for next time that is not going to be in, that I'm not going to be in the same position as I am now. And even if it doesn't go well the next time, maybe you still did something good that you improved on from the last competition, but now something else needs to, there's so many things that are constantly moving that, you know, you need to work on. Maybe your footwork wasn't good this time. Maybe your distance, maybe you felt sick this morning. Like there's so many things that could come up and it's like, you just got to deal with it. If you're waiting for that opportunity where you wake up and you feel great and you're moving so fast and you don't want to throw up and you're not nervous, like that is never going to happen. It never happens. And I can tell you every time that I've ever done really well is when I've felt physically not good. Um, I'm nervous, but it's, it's that internal talk of like, okay, focus on what's important. Focus on the match. Okay. My foot hurts. I don't care right now. I'm on the strip and I got to figure it out. Yeah. This is good. Yeah. It's, it's not easy, you know, in uh, any competition have a different history. And uh, yeah. one, uh, one of, uh, for me is a, uh, is, uh, is totally new, you know, for 12 years in the Olympic teams around the world. And uh, I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to accept, not too much, but to try to understand the United States. Is that because in the normal, you know, that the fencers start growing like a fencer and be turn a good friend, fencer after 24, 25 years. And right. here you have one of serious problems. When the kids do 70, 18, they go to the university. No, and uh, these four years, and you and uh, is a hair case. The guys doing university and stay in the high level fencers, and you the the, the hurlers because you know the normal when you go to the university. Bye bye. No, it's it's very complicated. How you drive? How you drove the situation to go to the university and stay doing uh, high level fencing? Well. My situation, I mean, everybody's situation is a little different, but when I actually graduated high school, halfway through my senior year, my mom was diagnosed with cancer and oh, sorry. yeah, it was uh, stage three cancer and, you know, she didn't really catch it early. So there was surgery and chemotherapy and all that stuff. And now I'm thinking I'm going off to college. Like, how is this going to work? I'm very close with, with my parents and um, I, I definitely looked at not going away for school, um, but also it was very important for me to find a school that can cater to um, in improving and maintaining my high level fencing. Um, you know, not every person has like, you know, in, in the tri-state area, I mean, there's Columbia, there's St. John's, there's, there's so many schools right next to me that I kind of could have attempted to, um, you know, uh, apply to. Um, so, so it all comes down to what your choice is. Um, I know that there's a lot of kids that feel very pressured by their parents to go somewhere, especially in Ivy League school. But to me, it's like you have one life to live and as much as your parents might pay for school or whatever the case may be, or maybe they want what's good for you, no one knows what's good for you except you. 
and that comes in fencing that comes in life and i made a decision for myself because i wanted to create some kind of legacy for myself um, in fencing and so i didn't want those years to fall away from me um, so that's why I chose St. John's University. I was able to continue working with Yuri and going into the city and training. And that was what was best for me. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, it, it's, it's not just a matter of where you go because it doesn't matter. Like if you go to Harvard, like your life is going to be easy. <laughs> you know, right. I, I don't want to dog on Ivy League schools, but it, it, it really matters where you get in life based off of how much work you put in and how much effort you're going to put in. So it doesn't matter where you go, what you do, what club you're at, you know, you don't have to be the best club in the world and and, and that's how you're gonna be the best fencer. You have to work your behind off every day and make best of what your environment is and and get along with that. So yeah, for, for me, I didn't wanna leave New York, New Jersey. Um, and uh, that was like really important for me to still continue working with Yuri. Yeah, and uh, this is, I, I totally agree, you know, that some, this, the train passed in front of our, us just once. If you lost the train, it's done, never more. Yeah. So I totally agree, it was perfect. So, and another question is, uh, in your whole career, of course, if I, Maybe not. Sometimes you're surprised. No, if I ask you your best moment, maybe your Olympic medal, and uh, in your more most hard moment, so you think, okay, maybe it's, I'm done now. I need to stop, or for some injury, or for you, okay, I, I don't want Mars too much. When this happened with you? Um, it, you know, like I was describing before, um, I think uh, Isaiah, when he asked that question, um, it was that competition in Montreal. Um, I remember just going there and being like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm a high level, you know, athlete and like, I can, I can, I can do this and I'm yeah. fencing and like nothing's working and I can feel my body, like just a complete disconnect from mind body. And like, I'm trying to tell it to do stuff and I'm losing to people I have never lost before. And that just, just, uh, made me literally fall apart at the seams. And I'm thinking like, wow, like this is, like everyone always says end on a high note. So like, they'll remember that you're like this great athlete and here I am coming in. Um, I'm supposed to be the leader, one of the leaders on my team and I can't even make it out of pools. Like I'm embarrassed. I'm, I'm thinking like, wow, is this, you know, how it's gonna end? Should I quit? Should I not even try? Um, you know, and then I knew I was going to have support um, in terms of uh, the national team sending me to the next competitions, I said, okay, I'm going regardless, but I have two months to, to kind of turn this around for myself. So every practice counted, every day I did some kind of meditation, even if it was five minutes. Um, you know, I told myself like the second those elevator doors open at the club, I am not thinking about anything else. I'm just focused on practice. So really compartmentalizing like what I'm focusing on. Um, and then when I went to Athens and I'm fencing and I think I won like my second DE and and Alex Ohotsky who was there as a, a stand-in coach for, for my coach, you know, he's like, you if it hurts that bad, you can pull out now. Like you got the points, you're back into the third position. And I said, no, like, I don't care if it hurts. Like I'm going, I'm, I, I need one more. I need one more. And, you know, making that eight, is still not completely healed and just crying like crying hysterically under my mask and everybody <laughs> the referees are looking at me like what's wrong with her and everyone's like she's just like she's coming back from a surgery and they're like she shouldn't be here and they're like no she has to be here um so that for me was like honestly one of the worst moments ever um in terms of like this is how my career ends and like should I really walk away um and then having that that glorious moment at the next one. And it was only glorious because of all the work that I had kind of, you know, put in, in that two month time. Yeah, this is amazing. I totally agree. So one more question here, guys. The guys are really shy. So I just need, I just moved oh, oh, the position. Laura? Laura? Hi. Oh, Hi. sorry, go Laura. Yes, Laura, hey. Oh, um, <laughs> I was wondering uh, with all your experience with fencing and all that, have you like developed a personal philosophy that you apply to fencing or maybe your personal philosophy developed 
during fencing and and up to now. Get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And I I think um, the the number one philosophy that I've learned is learning how to lose. Um, so I think there's a lot of, you know, competitions that we go to and, you know, we don't do well and you have to pick yourself back up and you, you mess up in a lesson and you, you know, your coach reams you out. You have to like, okay, how do I get back up? You lose a match at practice that like you really wanted to win, or there was a competition, like you have to pick yourself back up. So that whole, you know, feeling really crummy about yourself, and, like judging yourself and, Thing, like maybe this is not for me but it's like okay let me pick myself back up let me just like dial down the negativity and let's try again you know i i've had a lot of friends that you know are in business or um you know just try to do some kind of local competition in terms of like even if it's art and and they don't get top three and they freak out or they get second place and they're just like their whole life kind of falls apart and i'm like it's not it's i understand you were really invested but it's not the end of the world you know like i think learning how to lose on a daily basis has really set up a philosophy for me that like even if something doesn't go well the first time around i know i can make adjustments and i can try again is good guys just one situation because sometimes i can't see everybody here so if you will have a question if you can say hey okay i have a question you help me a lot because i know more yeah, guys yeah. have a question okay yeah. don't be shy so yeah. another question from the guys on the home um i have another question wow. so i've kind of realized that at least in epe when i'm more relaxed i tend to fence better um is that the same for you in Saber and also in competitions? How do you get to a mindset where you feel like ready to fence? Um, well, I'm also, okay. So I'm, I'm naturally like a really disgustingly competitive person. So even if I'm like, not like, if let's say you told me you're a ping pong champ, I'm just like, I can probably destroy you and I'll try to <laughs> like, I'm just so competitive, but, um, I think those moments when you feel it doesn't matter if you're saber epe foil if if you're feeling those moments where you're just like so calm and collected and you're just like fencing your best it's not that you're just not nervous i think it's because you're one thinking in the present so you're thinking about okay how do i get a point against this person you're not thinking like oh they just got that you know whatever I, i'm apologies perry six i don't know something in in fa you know like you got blocked and you're thinking like oh that was embarrassing people saw me my coach is watching uh <laughs> I, I lost that you know, like it, it almost feels like every time your coach is watching you at practice that's when you make the mistake and you're like why didn't they just see me a second before when i did it correctly um <laughs> all happens all the time and uh and, you know, even at a competition, like if you're having those moments where you're feeling like really chill and you're like, whoa, I see everything, like time is slowing down. Uh, again, it's it's thinking in the present and you're not thinking about like, I need to win this because then I'll fence Susan and I always win against Susan and Susan's gonna lose again and then I can win this. But like you're, you're thinking about all the stuff that like doesn't matter. Um, and also, um, I lost my track of thought. Um, yeah, so, and it's also thinking in the moment, but also distraction control. So, so because you're not thinking about everything else, you're not thinking about, I don't know, I, I have a test tomorrow or um, whatever the case may be, I woke up not feeling well, then I'm definitely not, you know, because you're minimizing the focus that um, all these distractions around you, you're able to just focus on what's in front of you. And if I have any kind of, um, sports uh, psychology training book like this book has helped me a lot and it's called in pursuit of excellence nice yeah it's nice. by terry orlick and he even has audio that i listen to before competition and these, these are like everyone thinks like harder faster stronger is how you're going to become a better athlete but think about all the other things that you need to work on in order to be the best so mental um you know keeping a cool head and all that stuff like don't just think if you're fastest and you're strongest in the club that's not going to make you feel super confident only in order to win competition um if that answered your question at all i ramble a lot so yeah thank you <laughs> yeah this is good this is great and uh 
another book I recommend maybe to you, Dagmara, is a great book. Is a uh, I believe and I hope so have uh, the translation in English. Uh, but the, the this perfect translation is a champion mind. Is a is a is a French book. The name the French mind. The 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 the, the writers is uh, Francois Duquesne. One of the most amazing books about scholarship sports I wrote in my life. It's amazing. So I sent to you after in the yeah yeah please do the, please do yeah that is a, is really amazing. So and do, okay I think it's Zoe Zoe do you have a question? Don't do it in Polish okay Zoe everybody need to understand <laughs> in English. Go Zoe. Uh, can you hear me? Go Zoe speak. Can you hear me? Speak loud. Go. Don't be shy. Um, what made you choose? Uh, saber over FAN foil. What, was what, what, what made you choose saber, not the others? Oh, well, if you must know, I actually started off as an FA fencer. Oh, what's happened if you and destroy your life? <laughs> my coach, my coach switched me after one year and he's like, You have no patience. You you just yeah. have to be a <laughs> fencer. <laughs> your coach is the, your coach is a wizard, no? For sure. Yeah, yeah you born I, you born to do FBA. I totally agree. To do same. Yeah, I totally I, agree. Yeah? I still have my first FBA. It's not here, but I, I have it. It's a it's a nice little this moment. All, I kept from this that. is all contrary because like a fencer, I was saber. When I became master fencer, I left saber and start with FBA. Was a good choice for me, was a good choice for you. Right? Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> maybe, maybe you just will be a Regular FAs and you return a great sabers. Maybe I return just a regular See? saber coach and uh, no, I return a, a good FA coach. So five <laughs> like, second decision can change your whole career. Yeah, your whole the life. universe, the universe know everything. And another thing is about talking about minds during the competition. You are more, if I remember, we meet each other in a lot of Pan American games and championships and some world championships. But of course, I have a focus in FA. So uh, in the competition, do you like to be more, okay, let me take off this mask now. Do you like, do you, do you, are, do you like to be more uh, quiet on your bubble to feel more focused or you like talk to leave the stress, how you drive yourself? Um, I'm, I want to say I'm a little bit in between. Like if I don't want to talk to you, I'm not going to talk to you. <laughs> Uh -huh. if, if I want to talk, then I'll talk. But most of the time, I'm just trying to focus. Um, uh -huh. But I'm different with how I am individually than when I'm in team events. So in team events, the pressure um, of the team? Not, not necessarily that there's pressure of the team, but with, with team event, Marielle is very quiet and just focused. Eliza is, uh, she's kind of quiet too. And I'm like, the one that's like, hey, okay, let's let's warm up, let's do this. Let's. Do you need anything? Do you need water? Do you want me to get that? Like, I'm just very <laughs> uh, motherly. I like to take care of my team, but uh -huh. individually, I, you know, I I try to just kind of focus. And I know that if I talk to people too much and like, you know, hang out and like make fun of people or whatever the case may be, I get really really distracted and. Um, yeah, so I, I learned that when I was young and I said, okay, I can't, I can't keep doing this. I need to just, and the number one thing, I actually um, recently had a conversation with some younger girls. They're like, well, I feel bad telling someone that I don't want to talk. And I'm like, well, guess what? Either you're not going to do well or you're going to do well based off of what you need for yourself. So literally just say, hey, like, we'll talk later. I really want to hang out with you, but like, I really need to focus right now. And they, if they respect you, then that's a friend. If they don't, then you'll learn right there that that's not someone you want to have in your circle. <laughs> yeah, perfect. I totally agree. Sometimes I speak with the kids. Okay, you need to drive yourself how, how you like, but uh, don't have a medal for miscongeniality. Just remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, so 100%. Be nice, but don't be so, so be yeah. polite, but don't, you're not in the party, no? If you feel, yeah. if you feel well thinking you are the party, and if you win the competition, right, go, no? Find what works for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good for you. I, I have some uh, some athletes in my my uh, old Olympic team. One day before, like a uh, take off to drink beer, and oh, yeah. uh, okay, <laughs> and the first and the first and the first day, the first moment with me, I say, "Hey kid, what a crazy, you know, it's like a coach, bam, 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 bam." 
And another day, the kid got a medal. So in another competition, I say, hey, remember, you need to take a beer today, huh? You can have a competition tomorrow. No? Yes, it's true. No? You, you need to do the same, huh? Hey, it's time your beer, go. No? Oh, that's hilarious. I, I'm not saying go beer, go take your beer and back. No? But if it works, then it if works. works. If it works for you, I get a medal. No, I want a medal. I just... What I do one day before, if it's nice to use, okay, but you need to be in bed, in the bed 10, 10, 10 p.m. Or if you're not in bed 10 p.m., don't let me know. Huh? <laughs> if you win the competition, I'm okay. No worries. <laughs> it's this way. So, and the, the, talking about these uh, tough moments now, today I, I saw one of, I, I believe you saw too, maybe, a, I don't know, bad news about uh, Tokyo, maybe it's not more postponed, maybe, maybe you'll be canceling. No. Oh yeah. I'm a, I'm a little sad with this. So and how how your situation inside this run for the for Tokyo, and uh, you stay with some hopes because I have some World Cups to do. No, but now we don't know what's happening. Yeah, I mean you know it's difficult to kind of put like, you know how it is like we we we're we're training for four years to compete like one day and it's it's i mean it's a high pressure very stressful situation but you know what's going on in the country what's going on around the world that's um as as upsetting as it can be in the end i have to keep reminding myself that i'm it's not in my control so if um it's it's also a form of distraction control and I, my goal is to train um, and to figure out a training schedule, how I can best prepare for Tokyo. And if it, even if it comes down to the day before it's canceled, then again, it's not in my control. But what's in my control right now is my work ethic, my ability to get to practice, my, you know, my whole training plan, my effort, all of that is in my control. So just focus on one you can control and then just let everything else go. Yeah, not much to do, no. We can do nothing. Just wait and uh, let's see what's happened. Yeah, guys. Someone would like to do one more question for Dagmara. It's say just say I want because sometimes I can't see everybody. Huh? Does Anna have a question? You've been quiet. <laughs> yeah, Anna is always quiet. <laughs> Anna is always quiet. And you, Jeff, do you have a question? Because you know, Dagmara, when I arrived here in the club, so of course I'm a master fancy, but in the last 25 years. I put my life in Epe and uh, I did some some good success in this. And when I arrived in the club, like the most parts of some clubs in the United States or small clubs, that have a lot of, not a head of love, the most part of the guys is do Epe here, but two or three, four or at least one or two sabers. And I say, okay, guys, let's do that. We have uh, two sabers, three foils, and 15, uh, 20 Epe's. Let's, let's change to Epe. It's better to start. And it was a good a good decision for our club too. But yeah. some kids, some kids start in Saber, like Jack. Jack, do you have a question for Dagmara? Jack, where are you? No, not really. <laughs> no questions? We got one. What? Okay, Laura. Oh, Anna, Anna, have a question. Uh, let Anna go first. Go, Anna. Anna will open them up. This is no. an amazing moment. Only you, Dagmar. Um, if you couldn't do saber, what um weapon would you do? Um, you know, I have a lot of fun fencing at bay because of like flicking someone like in the in the <laughs> something like that. I know it's like a very typical saber thing because we can't hit there. And I just think like those touches where people can like get their foot out and flesh and all. I mean, it's just like you're bending like air and time and space over here so it's uh it's it's there's a lot of athletic touches that i like in that sometimes you stab sometimes you hurt but it's okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay laura you know okay so so the last time you touched an fa was when you switched over to saber oh no um so i think the last time i fenced fa was 2000 15. Mm. Yeah. Whoa, and I so, fencing, yeah. And I remember fencing a young girl and she was like, you're so good. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I was thank like, you. you just made my day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she was like, 
13. So obviously I just kind of physically overpowered her. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I like, you know, if, if we sometimes come to the club, we, we had Epe at our club for a little bit, um, you know, and just mess around and kind of see how like tactics are different and like putting on a foil lame and being like, okay, let me try. So um, it's fun to just kind of dabble, dabble around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So depends how your how big your motivation or how you have a patience to 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 stay in the in the in the job so with your age i believe as a coach you have maybe more four or five years minimum in the high level to fence if you want depends of your humor no but uh one day this will be end yes and and uh you think you are prepared for these days? Never more Dagmar Wozniak in the in the strip for for taking serious and looking for high flies, or you think staying fancy like a coach or helping or maybe a kid in the future? Yeah, what do you think? I, uh, I definitely want to stay involved in the sport. Um, I love I love fencing, and I feel like I've learned a lot that I can inspire younger athletes, especially young female athletes. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of um, female coaches or like female. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, like personas that kind of stay in the sport. So um, <clears throat> I would like to definitely stick around, but I love being involved in sports. I love being involved in fencing and um, I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm been doing like some motivational talking to some of our younger girls and, um, about a lot of things about, you know, mental health, about body image issues. Um, so there's, there's a large range of stuff that, um, can be, can be addressed in, in fencing. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And, uh, for athletes, fencers like you and your level, um, I know I pass for this a lot of a lot of time in my life. It's tough when we say, "Okay, I'm done." It's... I don't think we can ever really say we're done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I yeah. I'll be honest. Uh, you know, even the times when I was injured and I thought, "Okay, like maybe I'll just have the surgery and step away." You know, you do the you're at a fencing competition and you're watching yeah. people fence and you're taking carries with them. So um, yeah. yeah, I have I have one uh, I have one athlete. He was he was great, and. Uh, one lady too uh, and uh, she's have a 36 and still top four you no know, going to the to the world championship and the one day you're like oh i'm thinking stop and i say why no because i 36 it's time to stop I say hey wait wait the kids take your place when the <laughs> kids take your place you are out there you and go into that, that keep going no yeah if, if, no, if no one if no one pass over you stay no? if <laughs> one day, yeah keep doing no, if you have a disposition, health, and patience to sleep in the in the floor in the airports and go to the other towns. <laughs> yeah, Keep there's doing. an opportunity for sure. Yeah. So, and uh, fencing. What is fencing for you? What is fencing for me? Um, it is my my blood, sweat, and tears. It is. Um, it's me. It's, it's everything that I am as a person, I've learned through fencing. Yeah, in your personal life, for sure, too. You know? And uh, so if you need to start again tomorrow, you do everything again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even the sacrifice. Yeah, for <laughs> sure, for sure. Even yeah. knowing all the, all the pain and injuries, like I love everything you know that i've gotten from fencing life life uh you know outlooks on life um the friends that i've made the experiences that i've had the places i've seen um starting from such a young age so i'm uh i'm really thankful for everything yeah i'm i agree it's a pleasure no? it's a it's an honor having yeah. the pleasure to travel around the world do what i like it is really a really a pleasure so, so are you like, holding that cat hostage <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah laura again go laura yes go yeah. ahead i found out dagmara that you and i have one thing in common oh i'll show you st john's university yeah <laughs> that's awesome yeah nice nice what year were you 
Um, I was junior varsity from 1981 to 83. Awesome. Pleasure. Pleasure. <laughs> you see? It's my word. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. Dagmar, I don't want to take more of your time. It was a great honor. It was a pleasure to us. And uh, I hope soon we can meet each other and maybe dinner together and uh, yeah. have some fun. And it was a really a great pleasure. Thank you so much. And my name, name of my kids, name of our club, and uh, some guests watching yeah, us no too. Problem. Yeah, it was it's a pleasure. Fun. Yeah, thank you thank so much. And, um, you know, you guys can find me on Instagram if you ever have any specific questions, if you were too nervous to ask, like, feel free to shoot me a DM. I, I answer all my, my incoming messages and stuff and fencing related, life related, whatever it is. Yeah, and I hope to see you soon, and I hope the competition starts in the yes. United States. Let's see. <laughs> Take Me care, too. my dear. <laughs> Fingers crossed. It was, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good Thank rest you. of your week. Bye. 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 Oh, Chinkuya. I know say Chinkuya. <laughs> chinkuya. Yes. The unique thing I know say in Polish is Chinkuya. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. See you. Bye. Florida, happy to see you, my dear. Hey, you, you guys are what? Doing training what, at, from 4 to 5, Monday through Friday? Yeah, 4 to 5 uh, in, uh, in Zoom, yes. On Zoom? Okay. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, no Zoom. Thursday, video analyze like today, and Friday, footworks. All right, so no Zoom on Wednesday, all right. No Zoom on Wednesday, okay? Right. And wait, Zoom wait. And and Friday, Zoom is 6 o'clock, okay? Uh, okay. Friday, 6. Um, are you still doing the um, uh, analyses on Thursdays? Yeah, for sure. Okay.